Wednesday, May 8th, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the markets are getting very interesting. Uh, the geopolitical situation as well, as far as Iran is concerned, as far as uh, the US-China trade deal situation or non-deal situation uh, is going. Uh, yeah, I, I think people need to be very careful, especially if they're heavily involved in the markets. I watched the market yesterday very closely. Uh, I even put on a little, uh, a few, few trades on my uh, spread betting account. Uh, mixed results. Uh, didn't do too badly. I, I did have a, a put option position that I started the day uh, before yesterday, uh, which was losing uh, when I put it on the first day. Uh, I bought some 2,800 puts in the S&P, uh, July. 2800 puts uh, they didn't do very well uh, on Monday uh, but I, I added on early yesterday and they did very well I got out with a tidy profit and then I traded a little bit the indices through the spread trading uh, with some success but lost some as well there ended up uh, in the black uh, but I can tell you uh, <laughs> It was quite wild, the market, uh, and uh, you need to be in it to, to see it. And that's why I did that kind of experiment. Um, and uh, the feeling I, I got is that uh, uh, a lot of people are going to think uh, that the markets are going to be saved because they have been for the last 10, 11 years. And uh, that might not happen this time. Um, Powers that be might uh, actually fool everyone. Uh, and why do I say that? Even though, uh, yes, we did see a, a strong rally in the last 10 minutes or so, 15, 10 minutes or so in the markets. Um, uh, I didn't see anything uh, that told me that they're trying to keep it up during the day, most of the day. But uh, anyway, uh, I think there's so much uh, leverage in the market, so much paper out there so much uh how can i say easy money that's been pumped into the markets for so many years uh since 2009 uh and uh even in the last few years uh that people are uh, that this uh market if it turns it could be quite disastrous uh, um and uh could the geopolitical situation be, uh, how can I say, a distraction against that? It could be. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about what I think uh, first today and then look at the markets before uh, I finish. i just keep going. Uh, so I saw some interesting headlines yesterday, of course. Uh, some, most of you have seen it as well, that the U.S. is uh, sending forces, uh, naval forces, uh, to Iran. Uh, they're concerned that Iran might attack U.S. interests. Uh, I think that's far-fetched. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it looks like uh, there is a, a big push to provoke Iran uh, into uh, some kind of conflict. And uh, if, as many of you uh, might know, Iran has been one of the, the targets of the neocons uh, going back uh, <laughs> Over 20 years, I would say, uh, from their paper, the PNAC, Project for the New American Century, uh, of which Elliot Abrams and um, John Bolton were signatories to, of course. Uh, there is that uh, interesting video of uh, General Wesley Clark, uh, where he talks about the day after 9-11, he went to the Pentagon and he was told that they were going to invade all these countries and Iran was part of it. And even Saudi Arabia at the end will be part of it. That's what I think is going on uh, there. And uh, it could also be used, of course, as an excuse to say, you know, this is why we had a financial crisis. Even though I think um, if we do have a financial crisis, if the market's uh, correct, it's mostly, <laughs> it's all due to the... Uh, to the central banking fiat money system of booms and busts 
of course, I would say even not under a central bank, there are uh, business cycles, but they're not uh, as accentuated and they're not as pronounced as they have become uh, in the 20th and in the 21st century uh, since the creation of the Federal Reserve uh, in 1913. So they are the ones to blame as usual, but uh, of course they're going to find other culprits. No, it was the uh, trade deal that collapsed with China. Oh, it was uh, the war that started uh, with Iran, which triggered a global conf conflict. And why do I say a, a global co conflict? And I'm not too convinced, I have to say, because this Iranian provocation has been going on for years. Uh, this might not work, who knows. And it's interesting as well that uh, they're pushing out uh, for something uh, in Iran right after they failed to uh, change the regime in Venezuela. You know, been, they've been trying it since the beginning of the year. Uh, recently, they tried uh, to foment a coup again in Venezuela. And, and by that, I actually mean the neocons because they are involved there. And they failed, so they're desperate to, to start something because I think they know that um, the game is up uh, in terms of the, uh, the financial markets and uh, we could see a big crisis. And uh, what about China and the trade deal? I, I think, you know, uh, the uh, suspension of the uh, exemption uh, for the uh, oil sanctions uh, for Iran, that a few countries could still keep... Uh, buying oil from Iran till the beginning of May, that has a lot to do with China because China is the biggest uh, buyer of oil uh, from Iran. And you see the headlines here. First one is U.S. can't ensure cheaper oil supplies to India, says Trade Secretary. India is a big buyer of Iranian oil. Asian buyers forced to pay much more for Saudi crude on supply crunch. Uh, China buys a lot of oil of Iranian oil and is not happy at all with the U.S. That's 23rd of April 2019. So I think that has a lot to do with why the trade negotiations failed. I don't think they're going to succeed. Some people think they have succeeded. Uh, I, some people think, and I, I feel a little bit like that, that there's much more than just trade negotiations going on, that it's just a front for a bigger negotiation uh, who knows um, but uh, we'll have to see uh, if there is a, a world conflict um, emanating from uh, the you know the tensions that are rising in the Persian Gulf uh, as it regards to Iran uh, Israel uh, Gaza the Palestinians this could be a, a major conflict, and uh, that's the other problem about uh, the markets. Uh, the last time there was a major, uh, the first major conflict of the last hundred years, World War I, uh, the markets had to be shut down for about six months, and you couldn't get a hold of your, uh, you know, liquidate your investments. Even in the U.S., uh, even though the U.S. did not enter the war until 1917, uh, New York Stock Exchange shut for months in 1914. Why, why, why would the New York Stock Exchange shut if the U.S. wasn't in the war? Well, because uh, they were guarding against uh, European investors, especially uh, London investors, uh, from liquidating their holdings in the U.S. to bring it back home because of the war. So now with the world being even more connected uh, investment-wise, I think uh, it's safe, well, not safe, but it's, uh, it makes sense to have some insurance outside the, the financial system. And by that, I mean, um, yeah, you could have cash at home, paper money cash, or precious metals as well, be out of the system. Uh, don't have too much of your wealth in the markets, I think. Or if you do, uh, take some out. Maybe uh, buy tangible assets. Who knows? The other uh, story I found interesting, and I'll put a link uh, below in the description to it, is Gundlach, uh, or Gundlach, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, 
warns bear market just getting started. Uh, better than 50% chance trade talks collapse. Uh, he's a fund manager, bond fund manager. I think he manages over 100 billion. I recommend you read this. And there's some interviews he's done with CNBC. Recommend you listen to that. He even talks about what I've been talking, that uh, the U.S. GDP has only been positive because of the growth in the national debt, which he thinks is a, a big problem. He, he talks about the last uh, 2018, how the national debt grew by 6% and the nominal GDP was 5%. So actually, uh, nominal GDP, which is even before real GDP, uh, shrunk uh, in the last two years. Because, and it's only grown because uh, the U.S. has been running, uh, you know, increasing the debt. And he thinks that's a problem. Uh, and the recommend this article then so quickly let's have a look at the what the markets are doing so yeah the stock markets have rallied a little bit but not that much the dow right now is at 26,013 up 48 s p 2889 up 4.75 points uh, and the nasdaq 100 is up uh, 18 points so the markets are up just around around 0.2 of a percent uh, precious metals yesterday, I followed them. I was following the markets, and uh, it, it, they traded in a very uh, stable fashion. Uh, gold crept up, but uh, very, very slowly and not much. <laughs> but it stayed very stable while everything you know around it was going down quite a lot. So uh, this morning, gold is up a little more. It's uh, at uh, twelve eighty seven twenty up. Uh, just over two dollars or 0.2 of a percent uh, silver uh, yesterday was basically it was down earlier in the day but afterwards it just stayed unchanged and didn't really move at all uh, right now it's at 1494 up four cents so the precious metals are perking up a bit it is 742 a.m. in London by the way uh, the currencies uh, the pound is down 0.1 of a percent 136.1 Euro 112.10 up about 0.17. Dollar uh, is down about 0.16 against the yen, just above 110. So the currencies are still really not moving that much here, uh, I would say, in the last few days. Uh, the dollar is down uh, right now against the yuan, 0.1 of a percent at 6.78. Uh, crude oil WTI is just under 62. It is up about 50 cents though. And uh, Brent is just uh, trading around 70, up about half a percent as well. Uh, bond markets yesterday uh, moved quite a bit, uh, i.e. the prices moved higher and we saw yields drop significantly and we saw the curve inverting quite a bit. Uh, and we are almost inverting from three month to 10 year now. Uh, the 10 year right now is at uh, 246, up just over one basis point. The three month is at 244. So uh, I think we got down to 244, 45 in the 10 year. So the three to seven year, which I always check right now is about six basis points inverted. So the yield curve, is telling us and the bond market that uh, all's not well with the economy um, and uh, i saw a, a chart someone put up comparing the stock market like that and the yield curve yields going down and uh, which one's gonna you know they usually move in tandem let's keep an eye on geopolitics let's keep an eye on the markets but uh, let's also be aware that we need to have some protection outside this system um, and if nothing happens and things get better again, the tensions subside, the markets make new highs, uh, you haven't really lost much. You've protected yourself uh, and things keep going, right? So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Make sure you hit the little notification bell above to be uh, notified of all my new videos. You can also follow me uh, on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.